Hello, friends of the earth. Uh, my name is Waylon Lewis with Elephant Journal, and I'm honored to be here today with Nicole Slinger. Yeah, hi. Thanks, thanks for thanks. coming down. No, thanks for having us. So uh, we just had like almost two feet of snow, I think full two feet of snow up where you live. 24 inches, yeah. So she just tobogganed down to Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to see the comments on Instagram because sadly you're sideways because we wanted to fit Nicole in um, and not just have it be on my big ugly mug. And often Facebook hides the comments these days. But Vanessa, Emily, they will get any of your comments or questions to me. Yeah. So we have a big agenda today, but yeah. one of them is I think you're giving our readers something. I am. Um, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, uh, my family has been very blessed with this year with a ton of support. Um, and we just wanted to do something great for the Elephant Journal community. So if you guys would go to our blog, um, which I believe is going to be in the comments, right? Mm -hmm. And tell us why you need a new mattress or why a Luft could help you. Um, we're going to let Elephant Journal pick tomorrow on Thanksgiving. And we're going to give away one of our adult beds. And we're also going to give away one of our little loof children's beds. So and these I, are mattresses. These are mattresses, yes. And, and they will, they do will they have box springs too or just a mattress um, board? If you need a box spring, let me know. We will get you one because oh, we do offer those. And I'm not digging for you guys, but yeah, no. I'm just trying to get hey, clear. Uh, cool. well, this is this is really about changing somebody's life and helping uh -huh. them sleep and doing some good in the world. So. so honestly, so we're mindful partners. We work together yeah. at Elephant, uh, full disclosure, but we only work with people we love and companies we love and respect. And so we're going to get into how most mattresses can be really toxic. Yeah. Because like anything in capitalism, and I'm a capitalism fan, but it needs to have transparency. It does. If we hide it, right? like, you know, a mattress, you were saying this, you just think of it as a rectangle. Right? You do. One of the things that I found with people is we know when our furniture is showing signs of wear and tear. We know when our couch is breaking down. We know when our table... Our sweater has a rip in it. That's right. Um, your rectangle in your room is never going to change its shape. So it could be way overdue for replacement. It could be not serving your body well. It could be full of everything from dust mites to toxins. And you really wouldn't know it by looking at it. So people tend to keep them way longer than they should. Um, and they're not always thinking of it as health equipment. And your mattress is health equipment. Yeah, it's funny. Like we as human beings and also in terms of the government regulations, like we're so uptight about some things. Like at mm -hmm. summer camp, you know, we have to measure the temperature of all the food as we should yeah. before we give it to the children. But then there's other things like mattresses. You know, it's shocking. Like we literally put formaldehyde and toxic stuff in them. Your couches as well. Carpets often are full of nasty stuff. Um, so educating around a, a green home. And this isn't some hippie kind of no, idealism no. thing. This is like you have children. This affects yeah. Yeah. human beings. Oh, it affects them in a profound way. So um, no one should be sleeping on a toxic mattress or having their face very close to walls or carpet that have the amount of toxic chemicals in, that they have in them. You're particularly susceptible if you have autoimmune issues, if right. you have allergies, ADD, ADHD, anybody on the spectrum, um, anybody with neurological disorders, allergies, asthma, that it really becomes a health hazard, but it is a hidden health hazard that people don't necessarily connect. And so part of what we want to do at Luft is our safe sleep campaign. We want to help people recognize some of those environmental toxins in the home and how to feel safe and feel healthy in your home with the products you select. So we've put the blog in the uh, comments on Facebook and Instagram. You're going to have to go to elephantjournal.com and search Luft, L-U-F-T. Mm -hmm. um, and then just comment on that blog and the most moving or funny or powerful or sweet comment, whatever. Uh, I think Vanessa is going to pick the uh, lucky winner of a free adult mattress, including shipping, I think, and yeah, free everything. kid. So sweet of you. We weren't expecting that. And then what we were expecting is what we can offer to every single one of you is the biggest discount that you offer, even bigger than Black what you Friday offer on Black Cyber Friday. Monday. Yeah, this is the biggest discount that yeah. we have offered to any community. To it's, elephant readers. Yeah, it's, it is bigger than our Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So spend that with your family. Uh, don't don't right. spend it out in stores. And we're going to offer $425 off of Queens and Kings. 200 on our adult product, $250 off Twins and Foles on our adult product, $150 off on all Little Loof product, all sizes. So um, trying to make it as affordable as possible to as many people as possible because we know the need out there is really great. So a lot of us are sort of, you know, half my friends I feel like 
will go to a local mattress shop and buy one, or they'll get one mailed to them that, you know, you like get the cardboard box kind of like with yep. roofed and you open it and go, yep. and you know, it's so fun and easy now to get a mattress. But what are, whether it's in a store or it's in a box, what are the common problems with it from a health point of view? So, unfortunately today, there is a lot of smoke and mirrors in our industry and not a ton of transparency in terms of what is inside your product. So, I first talk about the toxicity. Mattresses today can off gas with chemicals and toxicity and you really want to know the source of what is inside your beds today. And with globalization, a lot of manufacturers have gone from either entirely importing beds that may be very toxic, the fabrics might even be toxic, um, to partially importing components, right? So we'll get a lot of manufacturers that say assembled in the USA. Well, that means that they're bringing in componentry and they're assembling it. And what I have found is we'll get when we've looked at independent testing, you can get beds that say that they're organic, that say that they're all natural, that say that they've got certain certifications, and then when we test them, they're full of toxins, they're full of fillers, and so you really want to look at sourcing. Um, this so this is amazing to me because we have worked with other mattress companies that say organic and whatever, and they are. They're organic, they're certified, blah, 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 but because they're from overseas, in some part of the process, something really toxic can happen. Absolutely. And then you have, it's sort of like you have an organic salad and then you like throw it on the floor and then you put it back in the bowl. It's like, well, it's no longer maybe something you want to eat. Yeah, I'll look at, uh, organic is a hot button because, right. so certified organic can mean that the components are organic, but when they were processed, there were a ton of chemicals that were used in that process. So the entire product is not organic. Correct. Um, the other thing that I've heard a lot um, that people will say is, um, my bed doesn't have glue or adhesives. Um, I would be highly suspect of that because if it, if it doesn't have glue or adhesives, it is because it has a single layer in it and fabric. It's probably not comfortable or they're probably being misleading with Like some... the whole thing's latex or something? Yeah. So. When we build a bed, you want to look for a bed that has several layers. That, those layers are going to allow you to contour in without getting pressure points. And the more layers you have, the more expensive that manufacturing process is and probably the better quality. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to glue and those. And has a whole bunch. I we saw do. That. Yeah. We have, um, I want to say up to like five or six layers per bed because the, we really have tried to engineer beds to fit body types so that you're getting ideal alignment and ideal pressure points. We use a water-based glue. But if we didn't use glue, your mattress would get pregnant. It would, mm -hmm. it would eventually develop kind of a big bump in it as the layers started to shift. And you would lose your comfort and it wouldn't feel very good. And There's a lot of jokes better. there. Like king I, and yes. queen mattress, get Pre pregnant, pregnant uh, have a little twin you mattress. You got a little fun, right? And a I'm little sad. twin mattress, you got to put it in the side room. <laughs> I'm twisted a yeah. little too. Um, but so we really want, what we want to do at Louvre is we want to offer consumers safe certifications that are from the US. So one of the things that a lot of folks don't think about with the mattress industry is we don't have a watchdog organization. We don't have the FDA dotting I's and crossing T's and checking sort of the mattress industry and what is being advertised to the consumer versus what's really in the bed. There's no agency that looks at furniture or mattresses. Mm -hmm. there's, we don't really have a watchdog that wow. keeps up. So that's it. why there's so many poisons in furniture and mattress. Well, and you also, and why the certifications can be suspect, right? So mm. you really want to make sure that mm. the, the manufacturer that you're buying from has certifications that I believe should be, everything in Luft is made and sourced in the USA because when we were looking at it, we found that to be the most reputable and safe. It's not the cheapest, yeah. but it, we, know that the, we know that the components are gonna last, they're good quality, we know that they're low VOCs, so every Luft bed. Which are the, the toxic volatile, off gassing stuff. Yeah, volatile organic chemicals, right. but be, even beyond that. Or so, compounds, yeah. Um, Okeotex is our fabric certification. That is the highest level of textile certification that you can get. Yeah. Um, there's no carcinogens, heavy metals in fabric. Carcinogen, cancer. Correct. Heavy metals, not good. Not good, especially when you're, you have to think we're perspiring on our mattress. I hate to be yucky, but right. you can lose up to a liter of skin cell sweat and body fluid a night. Sorry. <laughs> Go eat your Thanksgiving dinner so now. Do, um, so, so, clean, so wash your sheets, people. Yeah, yes. And use a protector, but we'll get into that in a minute. That's yeah. one of my, my, my tips. But with that fluid 
has acidity to it, it has bacteria to it, and we're putting it into the compounds that are on our fabrics and in our foams and our beds, and you wanna make sure that you have a barrier product to keep it off, but you also don't wanna be laying that close to heavy metals and carcinogens. All of our foam is Certa Pure certified, which means that we're not using BPDDs, uh, BPDEs, we're not using formaldehyde, we're not using heavy metals. They're tested to make sure that they're very low in VOCs. Because, so foam is something I generally don't like. It's yeah. plastic, it's off-gassing, yep. but within that there's a range of like pretty darn safe, safe right. where you are and yeah. you have the certification yeah. to back it up to like god awful like off gassing forever run yeah yeah run yeah. <laughs> and like a lot of your cabinets like any particle board and melamine cabinets like i got rid of all mine and just put up some wood shelves yep. you know yeah you in really... my kitchen um you know, our whole home is now it's like we think people are crazy to have asbestos you know yeah. it's a wonderful life one of my favorite movies yeah when he's running through the snow, all that's asbestos. Yeah. You know, kids in 50s movies, they're throwing asbestos balls right. at each other. You thought it was fine. We now think our homes are kind of okay. Right. But half of what's in there is awful stuff. So the Environmental Protection Agency yeah. ranks indoor air quality as one of the top five environmental hazards in the U.S. Your indoor air. Um, so it is important. It really is important. Yeah. I highly recommend getting air filters. I also recommend, um, yeah. not to do with mattresses, but dusting regularly. So mm. dusting and not allowing those particles to accumulate on your surfaces and then breathing them in. Um, watching your carpet and your carpet padding. You know, we yeah. were kind of joking at lunch that carpet padding is sort of the hot dog of foam. Like you don't know really what goes into it and it's probably not the best stuff for you. Um, Meaning like hot dogs are made of all the leftover parts. Lips and parts. butts yeah. and nasty stuff, nasty stuff that you don't yeah. want to think about. I love a yeah. hot dog though. Um, yeah. So, sorry. I do, um, I do not love hot dogs. I know. I, I know. <laughs> but, um, yeah. uh, but anyways, nonetheless. Uh, sorry, it was hard to come the back with that one. The, cap, the, cap, um, the caption thing is going to say, nervous laughter. <laughs> um. But yeah, so you want to watch the, the foam in your house. You want to watch some of your major environmental um, toxins. And I learned this um, after being in the bedding industry for 18 years. I was sitting in my son's neurology office and, who has a seizure disorder. And he actually said the three most toxic things in your home are your paint, your carpet, and your mattress. And there's only one of those that we lay on for an extended period of time. In my case, the carpet. Then. But on most people, yes, think, right. Yeah, yeah. I just lay on the floor when I get home. Well, sure, and it, yeah. when you meditate. Yeah, there right? we go. Um, no, but so that's shocking right there. So paint. Eat, I use all eco paints in my house, mm -hmm. but even so. Eco paint is you were saying is awful. Yeah, it's still toxic. So you want to keep your furniture a little bit removed from the wall. My you want God. To keep, I, it, so you have Wait, to, you how have, can eco so called eco paint be that bad? Because we're still forever. We're still using chemicals, even in right. latex. I have a lot of folks that are latex fans, myself included. Um, you're still mixing chemicals into like the sap of latex. Paint is the same way. Even natural still... latex, not synthetic. Correct. Yeah, you're right. still to get it to cure. You are still putting a cocktail in there. It is not a hundred percent sap from a rubber. Yeah, because that's what I'm on a natural latex yeah. mattress. Yeah, and that's and it, it, latex has a ton of benefits. Big latex fan. Um, yeah. But you it, latex. It, yeah, it is not. It's not. Uh -huh. uh, all natural uh, uh -huh. and paint is the same way we we have to mix chemicals in to get it to stick and to last and so you just yeah. want to be mindful of having air filters love that you want to you want to keep your furniture a little bit of distance from the walls that's crazy to I, me. I know oh it's my pretty God. wild so I think this is a good time to say like this is elephant like we call elephant the mindful life and if any of this is sounding like Jack Nicholson and uh, whatever as good as it gets yeah. like he's like a little bit uh, paranoid yeah, paranoid about his soaps and clean. Like, you don't have to be that way. You can, you know, be eco. You can try to be responsible. You can enjoy your life. Right. Um, but you don't want all this toxic stuff with your children, in your dust, with your dogs, with your whatever. Right. So we talk about taking off our shoes, turning off lights. Like, it's all these little actions. And no pun intended, they can become organic in your daily life. They right? are. And you know what? I think it's a, it's a path, right? You don't necessarily start with air filters and... and reverse osmosis systems in your house but once you start just being mindful of what's in your home mm. you'll know what your comfort level is and if that means that you're getting an air filter if mm. it means that you're getting a water system if it means that you're paying closer attention to the fabrics and the foams and your couch and in your mattress 
whatever your comfort level is, you're yeah. going to find it, and you'll grow from there. And like one of my idols, Michael Pollan, who wrote all these books about food and kind of jump-started the farmer's market movement again as it was dying out, we forget, in 2000. Yeah. Yeah. Like, farmer's markets were like, those aren't going to survive. No. Um, and now there's like, I think the percentage of farmer's markets went up by 10,000% in that decade when he wrote his books. But he says, like, with food, like, it's not some crazy thing. It's just you want it as simple as possible yep. and as close to, you know... Your environment. Where it came from as right. possible. Same with the mattress, right? You don't want all these cocktails happening. and You don't. You want to keep it close to home. The U.S., this is one, one place where Republicans and Democrats can agree, is that if we keep it in the U.S., we're shopping local, yep. in our case, if we're in the U.S., and but we have pretty good environmental protections in the U.S., unlike right. elsewhere. And I'll tell you, so... Um, Every single loofed bed is made in Watertown, Wisconsin. We have people that have been working in our plant for 25 or 30 years, and oh. it's so cool to see the, their pride of ownership yeah. for them. This is true craftsmanship. Yeah. They are proud to be a part of American manufacturing. We're proud to support American manufacturing right. with wages that are great, with benefits, with people that retire, knowing that they're doing something great for our economy, but also for people from a sleep standpoint. We recycle all of our plastic, all of our foam, um, all of our cardboard in our plants. We use water-based glue, so we are... And the water-based glue, we didn't touch on that too much, you did, but I didn't follow up, is huge. Like in my huge. book, I'm using water-based glue now yeah, and that was like the worst possible thing is the conventional glue correct you know we don't want our employees breathing it in right. we don't want you breathing it in um so we are we are taking steps to uh, to offer non-toxic safe affordable sleep products we really wanted to make our products um reachable for everybody and the people that need it because you and i were talking about this at lunch you know some folks can afford to eat everything organic and some people just have to avoid the dirty dozen and regardless of where you're dirty at dirty dozen that, we have articles on that in elf and we can put in captions but yeah. it's it's like, the most toxic uh, fruits and vegetables out yeah. there in terms Often of absorbing the, skin, right? the absorbing like pesticides grape. right like a grape or a raisin loaded yep. with pesticides loaded so with pesticides if you can't be like you know yuppie whole foods person you just focus on these 12 things that have the most pesticides and it's and that's pretty okay. affordable. Yeah. That's right. And, and it's and huge. It is. So we wanted yeah. to create, we wanted to make it a spectrum that was affordable for everybody so that we can mm. try and get safe beds in as many homes as possible. Love that. Yeah, thanks. And you're, um, so where do we go from here? There's so many things. So if you're just <laughs> tuning in, we're uh, giving away a free mattress yeah. uh, for an adult and free one for the kid. Yep. Comment in the blog on Elephant. Search Luft, L-U-F-T. Yep. And uh, that link for Facebookers is in the comments. And then... And we want to hear why oh. you need a bed. We want you to share your story with us. Um, yeah, exactly. Tell your story um, about why the heck you need a bed that you can trust yeah. to sleep in eight hours a day. That's right. And speaking of eight hours a day or whatever it is, um, so some basic sleep tips. You're a sleep expert. Yeah. Everyone, even me, have issues with sleeping. I say even me because it's one thing, it's the one thing I've been good at historically is like going to bed and just falling asleep and having dreams where I'm running through meadows. You know, it's like I love sleeping. Um, but even me, I like stay up late, you know, maybe I'll watch too much TV or whatever. So we call it, we, we would call you a night owl. My yeah. sister's a night owl. Um, and I'm not. I'm that person that's in bed by 9.30. Yeah. Uh, night owls are okay. Yeah. So the one thing I want to tell you is... Um, it's not bad. It's not bad. I've always been told it was bad. Right. For your health. It just, uh, so I have everybody tell me it, you can't sleep on your stomach. I've slept on my stomach my whole entire life. It's mm. my lowest pressure sleep position on a pressure mat. Mm. That's who we... Being a night owl is fine, okay. but night owls need to recoup the sleep that they're missing, that they're not getting at night. So you're a great candidate for my number one sleep tip, which is napping. So I'll share with you very briefly kind of my sleep story, and then kind of we can use the tips for what where you're at in the spectrum in terms of what you need. Um, and the other end of the spectrum, just to give people uh, incentive for the story, is Caitlin, my accountant, you know, two children, yep. tons of interruptions, honestly, like just desperate to have one Relief. good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so similar to that, I, I slept like a baby my entire career, kind of occupational hazard of getting... It's funny we say that because babies don't sleep well. They should. They should yeah. sleep 12 hours a night. You can sleep train them. Right. It's a oh. whole other article oh, that I okay. should do, but um, uh, my, my five-month-old was sleeping 12 hours a night. Sleep like uh, a baby. Wow. Yeah. So, but... Um, 
so I always had slept really well and on great mattresses. And then my son had his first seizure and, um, the peaceful sleep that, that I was used to was gone in a second. Um, we were spending hours watching him in the monitors. You really don't know when a seizure is going to happen. Because Fast you have to be vigilant about you do. If his seizure goes, addressing it immediately. Yeah, if his seizure goes too long, he needs rescue medication, and it can be um, fatal. So, so it's, did you sleep with him in bed? No. Just to keep it? No. Like, so that's a great question that I get asked a lot by parents. Is co-sleeping good or bad? I mean, here's my short answer. You really have to decide what's best for you. But mm -hmm. when we look at, at a child sleep in a sleep lab, they typically sleep better when they're alone. And because Tim's can actually seize if he's overly tired, giving him good quality sleep is super important. So he sleeps alone, but we monitor him when he's at a high risk for a seizure. And then we, so fast forward to 2018, he was actually hospitalized four times over a three month period. And I was clinically sleep deprived. It took six cups of coffee for me to just be able to function. And oh I, God. I could no longer work. Um, when we did my labs, when he finally recuperated, I had a litany of health issues, everything from, um, being pre-diabetes, high cholesterol, thyroid issues. And in these were all new. Oh, absolutely. Increased inflammation. I had gained 30 pounds. A lot of people don't realize with new year's resolutions coming, how much your metabolism is affected by sleep deprivation. Mm. You end up craving more calories. You also end up storing fat a lot quicker. So it actually slows your metabolism mm. down, but you're eating more. Tons of health risks are associated with sleep yeah. deprivation. And it doesn't have to be an extreme situation like I am. It could be just losing a couple of hours here or there. It could be your coworker that is just breastfeeding and, and just a hectic new mom. Um, I share this with you because I want people to take a step back and say, whoa, could what I be dealing with right now have to do with my sleep routine or not having one? Because we have an exercise routine, we have a diet we follow, and we don't think of having a sleep routine. So if you are not sleeping well, here are a couple tips. If you're a night owl and or you're just not getting enough sleep or you're getting a lot of interrupted sleep, taking a nap can really help you. And there's two types of naps. There's planned naps. If you're going to take a planned nap, that's a longer nap. We want you to plan for at least 90 minutes, which is a whole sleep cycle. Be aware that you're going to wake up groggy and really tired and that wears off at, for about a half hour, but you've actually recuperated a full sleep cycle that you lost the night before. Wait, why would it be a full sleep cycle? So a full sleep cycle is 90 minutes. Oh, I see. So, so you it's can allow, night. yeah, I typically plan for like an hour and 45 minutes, which happens to be the same nap as my kids. So on the weekends, knowing Tim's sick right now, so I'm sleep deprived. On the weekends, my husband loses me over nap time, which is actually our kind of connection time. And I'm like, peace out. I'm going to go take a nap while the kids are napping. Uh -huh. um, and I try to plan for about an hour and 45 minutes. That gives me 90 minutes to actually be asleep, 15 minutes to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. um, so now, if you're like a hard partying, hard studying college student, or you're a parent and you're, well, everything's hectic, whatever, napping, napping could be a lifesaver. But so let me tell you the trick. This is my yeah. hack. If you're trying to survive, this is you, right? Because you're a night owl. You can take a cat nap. Cat naps are what the vast majority of us can do easily and need. So if you just sleep for 10 to 20 minutes, no more, because we don't want to put you in a deep stage of sleep and then have you wake up groggy, your endurance, your mental acuity, and your energy level will peak and spike. So mm. just a cat nap even if you take a couple during the day, can yield huge benefits. So um, if you did... A couple? So doing it a few times? Yeah, do it a few times. Huh. So, you know, depending on... There's sort on... of a weird social stigma around napping, right? There like, is, which is super if funny. If my staff were coming to me, or if I was going to my staff, either, I think, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to nap again. It's <laughs> very... It's... People would be like, Waylon doesn't work very hard. It's very American yeah. um, that we have to burn the candle at both ends. But here's the deal. Between techno stress, real stress, sleep deprivation... At least for me, I would rather have an employee take a couple of cat naps than be out sick because you also have to remember sleep deprivation affects your immune system. Do I want somebody to take a 10 minute nap and be highly performance driven and sharp or you, but you're right. There is a stigma there. I will tell you, you're going to get better performance out of your people by letting them rest just a little bit. Right, right. And your and happy people work harder. Right. right? Rest of well, people work smart. harder. So, <laughs> so, I, so for my journey in terms of getting enough hours, and I usually sleep enough. I sleep like seven or eight hours. But, Good. Um, That's what we were shooting for. I read a thing in the New York Times like a year or two ago that said um, that if you don't sleep enough, you're actually 
slower, you're worse mm -hmm. at decision making, slower mentally. Absolutely. And um, that changed my whole attitude. I was like, okay, now I'm definitely going to get enough sleep because I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a mm -hmm. leader of my business. I People are depending on me to be stable and smart and you know, present. One of the first things that goes is your mental acuity. Yeah. And one of the second is your memory. And so hey. you hear, you hear moms talk all the yeah. time about like baby brain and it's uh, from sleep deprivation. I have baby brain. Um, I have baby brain and my, my babies Without are, my babies are exactly, they're old yeah. enough that I should not have baby brain. Yeah. But so mental acuity, memory go really quickly. Your metabolism goes really quickly. Interestingly enough, what do you go, mean your metabol it slows down? It slows down, but you're the, the, weight, the weight loss. So the, the hormones in your body shift when you're sleep deprived. So mm. you're actually craving more calories and you're storing fat quicker. Mm. Your wow. cortisol, which is your stress hormone, goes wow. way up. So there's a lot of things. So if you want to like lose weight and be fit, rest. the best way to do that is get enough absolutely, rest. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. And, and, um, I love that. Yeah, it's important. And going into the holidays, this is a really big one that people don't realize, especially our college students out there, um, entrepreneurs, uh, working moms. So we're going to go to a lot of parties. We're going to enjoy libations. You actually will have an enhanced alcohol effect on sleep deprivation, meaning that you're going to be drunk quicker and the effect is going to be more dramatic. So for those of us that are driving, you don't want to drink alcohol and drive when you are sleep deprived because the effect is much greater right. and you aren't going to react as quick. There's actually a lot of dangers to not having a sleep routine and not having great sleep hygiene. So napping is number one. I really love napping. Number two, if you're in a critical state, like if the sleep deprivation is real, you're aware of it and you need immediate relief, which is what I'll, I, I talk to a ton of people like that. I love great sleep supplements. Um, they can really help you fall asleep quicker. They can keep you in a deep stage of sleep longer and they can increase your recovery. So a couple of my favorite are melatonin. can be very powerful. You want to start with a really low dose, three to five milligrams. Always check with your care provider before starting supplements because they can interact with drugs um, that you're taking or prescriptions. And also, but if you're not taking any drugs, just go for it. You know, I would still check with them um, because you want to look at your dosing and you want to look at your particular situation. So check with your doctor. I would check with your doctor, or if you have a natural health care provider, you can also refer to online. There's a lot of great resources that'll yeah. give you dosing. Um, and places like Pharmaca, if you know them, like they're yeah. one of our partners. They have people on staff who are super knowledgeable. Yes, and and so and and you can also understand that there's a, an element of bio individuality, right? So if one supplement doesn't work for you, that don't throw uh, the baby out with the bathwater. I want you to try a couple. So my cocktail, I take it every night, is I take 800 milligrams of magnesium glycinate. I take um, 400 milligrams of L-theanine. I take GABA, and I take 5-HTP and melatonin. I love all of them. Um, you have and, to, and do you mix it in the scotch, so you or can, do you just? <laughs> I, just I, so my husband doesn't doesn't take pills. I could like right. keep talking and <laughs> swallow them and not notice. And you just drink them with water. I just drink them a lot with water right before bed, and I'll and I'll like right before bed. Yeah, I'll share with you. You know. My husband and I have talked a lot because if you have a stressful life, I think there's two schools of camp. You're either waiting for the stress to resolve because it's temporary or you have chronic stress. Mm -hmm. And knowing that we deal with some medical complexities with my son, we tend to fall in the chronic stress category, right? Um, and so folks that have chronic stress, the reason I take it nightly is in spite of my stress, my brain can turn off. I can Huge. get into a deep sleep. I can calm that cortisol down and arrest my adrenals. And so it really allows me to function even though I have chronic stress. And you still can wake up no problem? Oh yeah. It doesn't like knock you out? No, no, no. I, and like I said, there's a, a bio-individuality element to it. So melatonin can affect some people, so can 5-HTP. So if you wake up groggy, instead of 5-HTP, take tryptophan, which is our turkey drug, right? We're all getting ready to have a big dose of tryptophan with our turkey. Not me. Uh, not you, but... Vegan uh, boy. Yes, but that's We okay. get it. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, I'm just... Keto. <laughs> <laughs> Opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Together, we're basically like a normal meat eater. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, with the average person. But yeah. so so if if you react to 5-HTP, switch it to tryptophan. Um, so supplements are great. Um, one of the other things that people don't think about, especially in Colorado, so we had a pretty dramatic shift in the seasons very rapidly. Like, I don't know if everybody's noticed that it's pitch black at five o'clock now and it's kind of wild. That can really mess with you in terms of seasonal depression and having your circadian clock reset. If you have access to red light therapy, 
Um, so red light therapy is just standing in front of uh, red light. You can Google it. It's actually in the article as well. My the the company, in your article that's in on yep. elephant under lift. Yep. yep. The the company that I like that I didn't reference in there is Juve. I have a Juve red light lamp, and my whole family uses it. Red light has a ton of health benefits. It can um, increase your mitochondria. It can help with your metabolism. It can help with joint pain, but the unexpected surprise for me was how much it affected our sleep and our circadian rhythms. Mm -hmm. So you can spend a few minutes, doesn't take very long, it's literally three to five minutes in front of a red light within two hours of sunrise or two hours of sunset. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna help you regulate your body based on light that you may not get because we're spending a little bit more time indoors during mm -hmm. the winter. Is that something like a lava lamp or something you can just put in the corner of a room and no, have, it, you have want, it go? No, it's more therapeutic, but okay. there's a lot of different devices, a lot of different price ranges out there. Because if you're a there. parent and you're running around with your kids and your whatever, your husband or your wife, or, um, you can't just like turn it on and no. have... Okay. You, you want to stand in front of it. You want to okay. be anywhere from uh, four to six inches away from it and you want to be fully exposed. So you want to, you want to take your clothes off. You actually uh -huh. want direct sunlight. Yeah. But it, cool. you don't need it for very long, right? So, you so it's almost more of a sauna thing. Like yeah. they have the red lights sometimes. Don't they, they do. They, yeah. they do. Um, but, but it's, it's something that you literally can do in the bathroom. Ours hangs behind our bathroom door. So, you know, TMI, but like while we're brushing our teeth and just in our morning routine, it's on and we're kind of doing a multitask. You're double with your red light. That's and right. Brushing your teeth. Getting my and, mitochondria and juiced up, getting okay. my circadian clock set. Boom. Bam. Yeah. And you feel really good. When you do it in the morning, it's actually, it gives me the same kind of zip as a cup of coffee. A red light? Yeah. It's but amazing. If, but in the morning you have normal light coming in. Is that bad to have it mixed? No. No. So, so you, you want to do it, you want to do it either first thing in the morning or within two hours of sundown. So, cause you're trying to get light exposure that mirrors the natural right. sunrise and sunset. Ugh. But it's wow. super easy, right? And non-invasive. And, and I talk to a lot of folks that are on Ambien and some of the really yeah. scary stuff out there. Yeah. And that is not great long term. Yeah. And so if we can reset your clock naturally, yeah. we want to. It's funny. The only time I've ever had insomnia was in college. I was in a dorm room where our beds were really close together. And my, my dorm buddy uh, partied super late, like all night, like yeah. right on top of me, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, it was the only time I took sleeping pills and stuff like that. Yeah. And the, it's funny, the drugs somehow, they helped me sort of sleep, but I also got insomnia at that time. It was the only time I ever had insomnia was when I was taking those drugs. Yeah. It was and, the only time I took those drugs. And speaking of that, that's a great segue into what should your sleeping environment be like since mm -hmm. you had a partying neighbor that kind of had yeah, noise. it was so, tough. So cool, dark room. People tend to sleep better when the thermostat is set between 63 and 68 degrees. Or um, 52 in my case. I, it, it's very, it ranges by person, yeah. but you want to listen to that internal yeah. temperature. Your core body temperature drops each night. I like it cold and then cozy. That's perfect yeah. because when you fall asleep, your core body temperature drops. That's what signals your brain to start the sleeping process. Mm -hmm. And so we want to have a cooler room to kind of initiate that process mm -hmm. and keep it going. Cooler rooms allow you to stay in deep stages of sleep longer. And, and that's, I read that in the times too. Yeah. Yeah. See, at least that. you know I know my stuff. I love it. No, I love it. <laughs> uh, well, I love that this stuff is science. It's really backed up. It's not just like It's not, no. Yeah. And, and get blackout blinds if you can keep mm. your room dark. A big one, you mentioned that you watch TV. Um, we want to have electronics out of your room if at all possible. Oh, yeah. And if totally. you're watching screens, you want to have either blue blocker sunglasses or glasses that you can wear, or mm -hmm. you want to have blue screen filters, or you want to set your phone to night vision. Really important with the kiddos, because the kiddos have a different kind of routine. So if All you've right. got small children that are struggling to sleep and they need a night light, that's okay. Get them a protector, get them a night light, get them white noise. Keep the room dark from the window standpoint and keep it cool, uh, but they oh. shouldn't be afraid of their room. Adults should have a dark quiet room if possible, low temp. Yeah, I love the electronics out. I'm like, we talk about that a lot with Elephant, um, keeping the phone, I try to keep my phone out of the room. Yep. It's also my alarm clock, so it works really well that it's like two rooms away, <laughs> and when it goes you off, have to get I up. have to get up. Um, of course, I can go right back to bed. Turn but your Wi-Fi off. Yeah, a oh, Wi-Fi off at night. So, yeah, I did this that is, for years. I don't do that anymore. Guys, you guys, it's 20 bucks at Home Depot online to get a plug that you plug your router into, and it comes with a remote. You hit that remote at night, and you're not radiating your house during the most right. important recovery part of your day because your cells are recuperating at right. night. You don't want to radiate them. Yeah, and generally, like, 
again, getting into the environmental stuff, like energy, vampires, any of those little red lights, or anything oh, yeah. on that you don't need on. No. Like, even your toaster, your yeah. tea kettle, or whatever that's plugged in, like, your um, hot pot, whatever. Yeah. Just unplug all that stuff, put them on uh, the... Yeah, you what do you call them? The power cords. Yeah, you just yeah, you can actually buy them online, yeah. and you plug you you have a little square. You plug that whatever appliance that you want to turn off into that square. You plug that into the wall, and the remote automatically shuts it off. I love that. It saves energy. Yeah. You are not you're not being exposed to as many EMFs. And then the last one that I think is super important to talk about. It's something that we're really proud of at Luft. Most people do not know this. Like I'm fascinating at a cocktail party for this one topic. Uh -huh. uh, as a matter of fact, my... In actual cocktail, not the bedtime cocktail. Yeah, that's right. In an actual yeah. cocktail party. As a matter of fact, when it comes up, my husband just walks away because he's like, okay, he's heard I it. just lost her and I don't want to hear it again. <laughs> um, mattresses are not a one size fits all mm. commodity. Mm. Your mattress should fit you as well as your bike does. Mm -hmm. A great pair of running shoes. For us ladies, jeans or a bathing suit you know how unique your body can be in the, when you're trying to fit yourself for those things yeah your mattress really needs to fit you and this is probably the the most overlooked part of when somebody is shopping for sleep equipment especially if you're trying to sleep with a partner maybe he's this big and you're this big um, and you have different support and comfort needs so I would love if you don't mind to just walk folks through a couple of things to look for when they're buying a bed well in the short answer here is you guys have sleep experts we can call and just say yes so i like to sleep on my side i'm six foot two i totally spaced on this i gotta tell you guys this yeah. so we have sleep advisors they know how to fit you for a bed over the phone as a matter of fact the first 100 people that call us from elephant journal will get um, a free sleep accessory of your choice you can pick either um, our tensile sheets which are natural and moisture wicking a mattress protector that is a moisture barrier allergen protector or a pillow that is also designed to fit your body the same way your bed does. So the first hundred people to call to go through the sleep advisor process that buy a bed, you'll get to pick a free accessory. So there's a nice little bonus. And that's a big bonus. Um, and we really wanted to do it big because bonus. we want yeah. we want people we want people to to go through a fitting process and not guess when they're making these decisions. So here's a general. Well, I kind of love just to give you a little compliment before we go forward. I love that you talk about the fitting because. Like this year, I started thinking about my toes were all getting squeezed. Yeah. Like all shoes don't really fit natural feet. Yes, yeah. And so I started being like, oh, I need sort of the Birkenstock kind of fit yeah. more. And there's actually cool things you can, you know, cool shoes that yeah. fit that. And it's like, you know, we're just slowly waking up to the fact that like one size fits all apply doesn't apply to a mattress as well. It doesn't. And if you really think about it, we're... We've learned so much now, whether or not it is 23andMe and recognizing that you have unique genetic characteristics right. to custom fit, things are more personalized today. Right. So and I, not the fit. I didn't mean the fit. Just the yeah. uh, what, how strong, how stable it is. Or, yeah. yeah. So let me walk you through uh, yeah. just kind of some yeah, uh, general rules I found. If you have joint pain, which is soft tissue pain, so think shoulder, hip bursitis, um, fibromyalgia, um, gout, you're looking for a bed that is gonna provide you more pressure relief. So you're gonna look for something on the softer side. If you have very lean, even body weight, and your body weight is evenly distributed, or you both of you weigh less than like 185 pounds, you're really looking for a soft bed because most beds out there, if you're going firm, are gonna give you too much support and you're gonna cause pressure points that aggravate mm -hmm. either that soft tissue pain or the fact that you don't you don't weigh a ton, so you don't need a ton of support. You really are looking for a softer bed. And at Luft, we call that our plush multi-sleeper. So anybody with soft tissue pain, that's lean, and also that really likes a soft bed. Like I'm that person. I am the person that wants a cloud, kind of a marshmallow. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not overly soft. You're not gonna sink into it, but you are going to get great pressure relief. So anybody with joint pain, anybody on the leaner side, anybody that really likes a softer feel. For the vast majority of the population, our luxury firm multi-sleeper is where we want to go. That is a great mix for couples that are different shapes and sizes. It's our universal sleeper position, meaning you can sleep on it as a side sleeper, a stomach sleeper, or a back sleeper. If you're a stomach or a back sleeper, 
it's gonna give you a softer feel than if you like a quote unquote firm bed, but still be very supportive. It's our most popular seller. People rave about the fact that it gives folks of different shapes and sizes great pressure relief and great support. It really is a balance between mm. good alignment and comfort. And then last but not least is our firm fan bed. You know, I've bumped into people throughout the years and it doesn't matter what I say to them. They're like, I like a firm bed. Um, those individuals and people with true lumbar pain. So if you really have legitimate back pain, if you're a stomach sleeper or a back sleeper, we have a great bed for you that isn't a board. It's not a brick. It's not going to cause excessive pressure points, but you're going to get good alignment. You're going to feel that support and you're going to get good pressure relief. Then I'm going to jump on my soapbox for a moment. Um, Little Luft was actually invented and designed in, um, as an inspiration for my son. I wanted to create a bed for kids that was safe, non-toxic, affordable, and built for them. Because most parents go buy the first big boy, big girl bed. They go into a store. They're dealing with a commission salesperson that just heard they're not going to spend any money. So they take them to the cheapest bed in the store that's made for an adult that has God knows what in it and they get them out the door. So, you know, three, $400 later, you've got your first big boy bed, big girl bed, and you didn't think about it. At Little Luft, we have a bed where it's a custom coil system made for young bodies, 35 pounds to 175 pounds. We use Certa Pure certified serene it's a big foam. Kid. Well, we wanted right. to take them from their first bed to college was right. sort of our, our right. mission. Um, and we actually have parents that write in all the time and say, hey, I had to sleep with my kid last night and my bed's super comfortable. Oh, Can we buy one for us? Um, and, oh, and you can, yeah. but we love the fact that they get comfort out of it right. and the kids get comfort out of it. It's got Serta Pure certified Serene foam. What's unique about Serene is Serene is, has adaptive technology. What was Serene, the phone? Mm -hmm, that's okay. the name of the phone. It's adaptive. So it's going to actually provide you support and pressure relief. So the bed's kind of designed to grow with them and allow them to grow into it. Fabric, just like Adult Luft, is Okiotech certified. So it is an incredible bed that sleeps cool, coils made for young bodies, certified non-toxic, and it's at a great value. Um, and I highly encourage parents to um, be very mindful when they're buying their child's first bed. I get asked a lot of times about all foam beds for kids. Here's the deal. Um, you and I talked about this earlier. I don't care if it's latex or serene or polyurethane foam. The more foam that's in the bed, the more chemicals are in your bed. I'm not a huge fan of having all foam beds for kids. Um, they sweat in them. They get sick in them. It, 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 you're, the, if you can put a coil system in there that's going to cushion them, that gives them good support without too much pressure, you're getting better airflow, you're using less foam, it's better for the environment, and it's better for them. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and I'll get off my soapbox. No, that's great. <laughs> well, I mean, it's super important developmentally for children yeah. to not be around toxins all the time. Correct. Um, yeah. Do we have any comments or questions? I wanted to. A lot of good comments. Just oh, people no, no questions. Them. Cool. Uh, there's a there's a question about. Going over what BPD or them BPDs, yeah. Um, so those are our um, toxic, uh, toxic. You mentioned it before, like formaldehyde, um, fire barriers, and fire, yeah. and fire retardants, and, so, and we didn't touch on that with Luft, and I should have. I'm remiss. I apologize. Um, our fire retardant and our fire barrier in our beds is cotton and rayon fabric. It's the same mm. fabric that you can put against your skin. So mm. no harsh chemicals, mm. um, no formaldehyde, no carcinogens, things of that sort. Um, so very important, but that's what the BPDs are. And I if you Google that. if you Google Certipure, it is C E R T uh, dash P U R. You'll get great information on that not only the independent testing that they do because it's third party testing, but they, the fact that they actually check the quality of the foams as well mm -hmm. as the chemical content. Yeah. And it's something, you know, and the VOCs, which we've is really already good. touched on this, but like a lot of pillows, like the kind you're going to give away to mm -hmm. people who a hundred people buy the beds. A lot of pillows are not good quality no. and off gas. And like we were sleeping on a plastic cloud of toxins. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. I even look at like craft fairs I go to, like beautiful, like pillowcases that are handmade and they're stuffed, yeah. or they're like pillows for a couch or something. I'm like, what's what's that filled with? They're like, oh, whatever. It's just some of that, you know, foam stuff from China. And you're like, dude, that is. You do not want to yeah. be laying your face on that. No, and it reminds me. So a lot <clears> of the <throat> toys today are made from China, and so when my kids put them in their mouth, I like 
I dive like You're I'm like, playing no. like I'm playing football. I'm like, don't put that in. But the pillows. Yeah. Folks don't realize it's a very close cousin. And so, again, you want something that's safe. You want something that's certified. Yeah. Um, and I'm not digging on any other retailer or where you can get this stuff. You just want to be very careful if you're buying it at a big box store or you're looking for – sometimes that super value is for a reason. And yeah. so you just want to make sure that yeah. um, you're getting something, especially there because you're breathing it in. Put, and if you – and it goes back to the dirty dozen. Like, let's just say you can't afford a, a really – great high quality pillow that you want to get um put a put a pillow protector on there that is a complete ba barrier product that mm. is also a dust mite protector because that is also it's almost like sealing it in a bag mm. so that you're not breathing it in and right. you should be doing that anyway because we drool a lot there's a lot of yuck my god can we talk about dust mites for a second yeah please okay i'm sorry i'm feeling like i need to bring you're... you over not to uh, be propositioning <laughs> you know, Let's bring you to my my bedroom, which is like I think of it as like super eco, like wool filled pillows and all this stuff. And uh, I'm like, oh my god, I don't think I've thought of everything here. No, you haven't. And I'm gonna burst your bubble right now. Okay. So, you don't like wool? No. Um, oh. And yeah. So okay, we're, uh -huh. it's perfect segue into dust mites. Um, so you're I have, welcome. I know you're just like a sentence I never thought I'd hear. Tee it up. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. Um. I get a lot of folks that say, oh, I have wool, I have silk, I have um, down. I, I, have, I have folks out there that they would go to the gates of hell for down. Um, right. That's all animal byproduct. Yeah. And when you sweat in it and or moisture gets in it, it is a perfect natural biological ecosystem for dust mites and germs and nasty stuff. But wool is antibacterial, right? Wool is your exception. I'm not a down no. fan because yeah. it's also torture. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. But so wool is antibacterial, but you're still going to accumulate in it. So right. what I want you to do, regardless, so, so folks that love their down, they love their wool, they love their silk. Oh, I'm not attached to anything. I just want it to be eco-responsible. Yeah not cause torturous pain yep. and not poison me. That's ideally. right. That's... And ideally be affordable or at least a good investment. Does it blow your mind that we have to have this conversation today? It kind blows, of. It blows my mind. Yeah. Um, but we want to put... Well, when you're not protected by a caring EPA, which historically we may have been and maybe less so now, yeah. um, it's all on us. It's incumbent on us to figure it out. Yeah. Science-based, not out of yeah. fear or craziness. In the EPA's defense... Um, I want to say the last statistic that I read, and don't quote me on this, it's a ballpark. Well, it, you're on video, so we're kind of quoting you on Okay, it. but it's a ballpark. I'm disclaiming that it, yeah, yeah. don't, don't yeah, hold yeah. me to the exact number. Okay. It was something like 80,000 new chemicals get introduced into our environment a week. And how could you even a keep week. up? A week. A week. Oh, my God. Um, how could you even keep up with it, right? Oh, my God. So, um, but, but back to, back to wool. I digress. So, if you have down pillows, wool, any of that good stuff, we really want to put a barrier product around it. So, we want to put a, a pillow encasement on it or a mattress yeah. protector on it. Those are going to keep dust, pollutants in your home, um, whether or not they're blowing in through the window, whatever the case may be, from getting inside your bed and you breathing them in. Right. Um, and then we want to wash those once to twice a week. And so let's talk about dust mites for a second. Um, the average person loses up to a liter of skin cells, sweat, and body fluid a night. So super gross. I'm sorry, but if you are sleeping with a partner now... Which is a liter? Well, think of a two like liter. A if you're sleeping yeah. with a partner, think of a two liter bottle of Coke. Okay, you're dumping that into your mattress. If you don't have Ow. a barrier product, well, you, you sweat at night. It's part of our recuperation but a process. a liter's worth? Yeah, skin cells put in body fluid, right? There's a cocktail yeah. there. It's not all just perspiration. Um, and it's an average. So um, So basically, never sleep with anyone. No, it's not that. You don't sleep have with a, your, you don't wanna, even sleep with yourself. You want to have a barrier product in your bed. So you want to have Basically, some... sleep in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> Rinse, wash it down, power wash the yeah. whole situation. No, but you want to have a mattress protector and a pillow protector on your bed to, to capture that. So if you don't do your sheets for a month, like many of us, oh my you God. have like 30 liters of, of If you die, we can clone cells. you really easily. But yeah. here's the super yuck factor. We're going to get uh. grosser than that. Um, all right, so. It's motivating. Yeah, it is. You're, everybody's going to go home and do laundry tonight <laughs> while they're drinking their first holiday off cocktail. Um, yeah. But so... The skin cells, sweat, and body fluid attract dust mites because that's what they eat. But we're not allergic. Wait, what's body fluid? Because you're distinguishing that from sweat. Well, is it oil? Oh. You know, back. You, yeah, yeah. So they're like, okay. we lose. Yeah, yeah. And then you're not a woman. We all get it. Um, <laughs> she's shaking, Vanessa's shaking her head. <laughs> um, just anyways, yeah. Sorry, getting real. Um, but 
dust mites are attracted to that, and then they eat that for food. But Isn't that good? They're, like, getting rid of it? Well, no, because... We're not allergic to dust mites, which incidentally are spiders. They're arachnoids. So any of my spider phobes, they're all over your house. Thousands cool. of them. Spiders are awesome. Um, you know, not everybody feels that way. I my, know, but we should because they kill the mosquitoes I, I, the ecosystem. I get it. Circle of life. God bless the spiders. I don't want to sleep with them. Circle of life. Um, <laughs> so, so we're not allergic to the dust mites. We're allergic to their poop. And that's wow. what we breathe in that causes asthma, morning mm. congestion, bronchitis, rhinitis. Mm. And so dust mites are not necessarily something that we want an infestation of right. um, in our beds. We're always going to have some of them on our furniture and our carpets. You can get rid of that by vacuuming. You really do want to use a mattress protector and a pillow protector always. If you have kids, they may crawl into bed with you and get sick. They may get sick in their own beds. A protect your investment. So... Use your mattress protectors, your pillow protectors. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I need like an, I need a looped app to be like, do your laundry, cover your pillow. That's right. You Take know. your supplements. Let's Take break a nap. Yeah. Take the cocktail, not that cocktail. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. So I know that's a lot of information out no, there, but, great. but they're kind of good hacks. So, you know. If you're in a quick fix, take a nap. If you can take some supplements from chronic stress, incorporate those. Definitely taking a nap right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you can go even further and reset your circadian rhythm, if you know that you're one of those people that has seasonal depression and or um, like your coworker who, she was breastfeeding for a long period of time. She's had young children back to back. So you've got a long period of time where her rhythms and routines have been stretched right. and manipulated. Right. You're gonna wanna reset them. Um, a couple of things to do. Don't you... your rhythms just adapt? I mean, nothing's yes. more natural than having children. I know that's intensely hard, but wouldn't your circadian you know, when you quit, when you quit, when you quit breastfeeding, the hormonal hell that a woman goes through, mm. even postpartum, even if you don't breastfeed, mm. it can take six months to a year. Um, but they should reset. And wow. if you want to try and do the same thing that you can do in a very short period of time with red light naturally, this is kind of a good hack. Um, going outside and getting direct sunlight, particularly behind your ears and the back of your knees, especially when you're traveling. If you're traveling to Europe and, and, and you have jet lag or you just have jet lag in general, that's gonna help reset your circadian rhythms naturally. Why the ear knee thing? There's kind of like sensors back there that are particularly susceptible to light. Wow, how funny. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm full of useless So wear short shorts. Yes. And we're gonna see Waylon biking to work in shorts. So like put your now. hair in a ponytail uh, yeah. if you have long hair yeah. or And whatever. and and try not to wear your sunglasses for at least twenty to thirty minutes. Right. Let the sunlight get into your eyes. Wow. So much to know. In I this feel world. like I know it's useless information. But no, I've been accumulating it. it for a long time. I never get jet lag, I think maybe because I naturally am like usually in shorts and I, yeah. my ears are exposed and Yep. And and I never wear sunglasses. You you also get a great balance of of exercise and being outdoors you know mm -hmm. being sedentary today is the new smoking and so most people including kids don't even get 20 minutes outside every day and that's a big deal when it comes to including sleep. kids including kids yeah that's like a statistic yeah. yeah 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 if i didn't have like hours of running around when i was a kid my mom would have gone crazy yes and i would have gone crazy yeah yeah i yeah, get it um wow. so we can't, Tim has a temperature regulation issue um, and can see if he gets too hot or too cold. So a lot of times um, he is playing indoors, but we make sure that he gets plenty of physical activity. So physical activity helps to, um, to enhance your mitochondria health, which is fuel for your cells. It helps burn off energy so you sleep better. I mean, there's just so many benefits to it. So you really do want to make take, take an inventory of how sedentary you are and go for a walk. If you can go for a 20 minute walk every right. day. It's a big deal. So just in terms of the basics, <laughs> like exercise, yeah. sleep, yeah. clean your house so you don't have too much dust, crappy stuff. That, yeah. um, don't buy toxic stuff that you're going to be putting your face on forever, Yeah. especially with your children. Yeah. Mattress so it is pretty basic stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we're giving away, to wrap up, we're giving away, you're giving away yeah. two mattresses, one for adult, one for kid. Comment on the uh, Elephant Journal blog. It's on Facebook. About why you need a mattress. Yeah. Tell well, us, by, your, by, to share your story with us. We would love to just help yeah. some cool. folks. And, yeah. There's a question. Please. Or an idea. If your child has a different sleep pattern than you do, say they're a morning person and you're a night owl, how do you, what do you suggest for that? So that's a great question. And if we could talk about kids, um, 
there's one thing we didn't talk about is sleep routines, um, which are really a big deal. So I'm a big believer in making sure that your kids are getting the proper amount of sleep. And so um, sleep training your child is, I think, something that you can do very compassionately. I've done it with both my kids. Um, everybody has heard of Ferber, but very few people have actually wrote or read Ferber's book, and I have read it cover to cover. It's Solve Your Child's Sleep Problems. You can sleep train your child so that they are sleeping when they're very young, 11 to 12 hours a night, and then as they get older, um, they should be still sleeping somewhere between, I would say, 10 to 8 hours a night. Um, Having a sleep routine is important. Sleep routines do not have to be complicated and adults can use them as well as kids. For an adult, it can be as simple as taking a couple of deep breaths or saying a prayer or meditation before bed. It can be as elaborate as taking a hot bath, reading a book, doing something to calm your mind. For kids in our house, we have a rock solid sleep routine that we've always had since they were very small. Um, we go to the bathroom and we brush our teeth. They go potty. We read them a book, we sing them a song, and it's lights out. And they've never had sleep issues. They oh. feel very secure and very safe. Both I love the a song. You sing a little song. What do you sing? I do. Different I stuff? I actually sing like two or three. And I will tell you, my, my children, I had a dream of being a singer my whole life. And they are the only two human beings that like the sound of my voice. Oh. Bless their hearts. <laughs> I sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, a couple of songs that I've made up, and um, wow. around them. We'll put that on the Luft app, the yeah. Luft app. Oh my god, that would keep, it would keep people awake. Um, so, but nonetheless. Yeah, you're like, yeah. what's happening? So, but to answer that question okay. specifically, so if you're a night owl, I go back to I'm not like an extreme night owl. Well, I'm talking about the mom. They have oh. a question. So, oh, okay, yeah. so let's just say kids get up early, you're a night owl, and the morning is super painful for you. Um, obviously, you're going to get up with the kids, but you really do want to take a cat nap or a couple of cat naps throughout the day. So if they're still napping or even when they're at school, um, when you come home from work, I don't know about you, but a lot of times when I'm done at work, I'm spent. Like mentally, when I'm walking down my stairs, so I'm lucky enough to work from home, and I realize, okay, now I've got to make dinner. I've got to engage with the kids for the first time all day long. And I feel kind of just like somebody just clubbed me in the head. Have your husband take them for a little while. Go take a cat nap. It's 10 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes. And it's going to help you feel refreshed so that you can face that day. And do you put an alarm or do you just know to wake up? I would do an alarm. Do a soft alarm. You don't, yeah. you know, you don't ever want to wake up with right. like you want to throw it out the window, right? right. And right. there's a lot of great sleep alarms today that will wake you up gently with light, with vibration and rhythm, with chimes. Make it some soothing. And that goes okay. for in the morning and at naps. Okay. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, my natural routine is I, you know, and I do watch TV or work late often, which is bad, but then I have a good routine and it provides a break and I just fall asleep. And so it's like the brushing teeth, going outside for one second. I like to look at the stars, just Perfect. like see some nature. Moon bathing is great too, to help oh, set yeah. your circadian rhythms. And then meditate for a couple minutes, you know, dedicate yeah. my day to the yeah. benefit of everyone, not just me. And, um, and that's sort of it. And it's like a 10 minute thing. And, uh, and then I'm just like, oh. well, routines are great. So if you can get into a sleep routine, even if you're a night owl, it kind of, it, it is so habitual that your yeah. brain just knows it's time to go to sleep. Like my husband makes fun oh, of and me. Oh, I turn stuff off. Good. But my husband makes fun of me that if he can't catch me before I say my prayers, I'm, I'm out. I'm yeah. done. So if he wants yeah. pillow talk or anything else for me, yeah. I forget it. If he didn't get right. me before the prayers, I'm just I like done. that though. Because then even in a relationship, like, you have clarity about, like, are we hanging out? Are we yeah. smooching or whatever? Yeah. Or are we, like, now we're going to bed? Yeah. And I love that clarity because I get super irritable when I'm in a relationship and I'm, like, asleep or trying to sleep. And, and someone's the like, hey, let's talk. Or, yeah. You know, and I'm like, I'm just, like, going into my hole, you know? Yes. Yeah. And then another thing, too. So let's just say you had a really bad day. Let's say you've been ran over by some traumatic news something is is making an active brain that's going to be much harder right. to stress to quiet stress um one of my best hacks and tricks and i talk about this in the article is you take a really hot bath or mm -hmm. a really hot shower mm -hmm. um that raises your core body temperature and when you step out into the cool air it lowers your core body temperature which naturally starts the sleeping process so that kind of helps to cool. almost it hijacks your brain right. so right into your sympathetic nervous Ooh, I system. love that. so if you're stressed out 
take a bath or a shower and then you get cool and you go right into yeah, your routine. Yeah, if you've ever bath. if you've ever taken like a hot bath or hot shower and you felt like really comatose about 30 minutes later, mm. that's why. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Okay, right, so for people that do not sleep a full night, their yeah. sleep is interrupted a lot. Do yep. you have any suggestions for them or and is that a bad thing? <sighs> yes, it's a bad thing. Um, and, and chronically, it is really bad. So I bump into that with um, the stuff that we deal with in my house, it, it, particularly if we're in, in a cycle we're in right now where um, Tim You're is... You're in a what? We're, I'm in a cycle right now where Tim's sick, oh, right? Sorry. So that means that I'm waking up multiple times a night to either give him medication, to, um, to, to check on him. And some people have a lot of arousals without necessarily a reason. And I want you to kind of troubleshoot that. Look at your mattress. Um, look at your stimulants. Are you drinking, eating, um, or having caffeine late in the day? So most people don't know this. If you eat after 6 or 7 p.m., anything, I don't care if it's a little square of chocolate, if it is a good glass of wine, um, if you eat after 7 p.m., you are you are um, messing with your melatonin and your cortisol cycle and you're going to dysregulate your hormones. That can cause a lot of sleep arousals. So pay attention to when you're eating and you're drinking. Try not to have caffeine after 1 or 2 p.m. and limit it to only two cups. Try not to exercise. Two cups a day or two cups at 1 or 2? No, two cups a day. Yeah. Um, and, and that's bio-individual. Like my sister can do quad shots from Starbucks and go to sleep. And but I'm a lot like, of people, yeah, I mean, I've always I said that. Um, but I think some of that's matcha. Like I, I've always said that stuff and it, it still affects you. Yeah, I believe, yeah. I believe so, because I can't, I, she's a night owl, but it's not, because she's and always a night owl. some of that is like chronic lack of sleep. Like, my dad and me, mm -hmm. we both were like, we can drink a pot of coffee and go to bed. Some of that's like, you haven't slept enough, so you're like, just correct. ready to crash. Correct, correct. Um, so, I want you to troubleshoot that. Look at yeah. your, look at your mattress. Um, what does looking at your mattress mean? If, so I have people that don't realize that they're waking up multiple times up throughout the night um, because of pressure. So I'll give you my one little kind of uh, pressure pressure points. So oh. if we go to a baseball game and we sit down, we're nice and comfortable, but by the seventh inning, oh. our butt hurts and we have to stand up. Same concept happens in the middle of the night and most people are in a bed that is too hard for them, to, believe it or not, most of us are. Um, so if you are sleeping, particularly on your side, and you're building pressure because you're putting all your body weight on half the space, the beginning of the night is the beginning of the game. There's no pressure, you're sleeping well by hours four, five, six, and seven, now you're starting to wake up and look at your alarm clock and go, oh, it's only 2.30 and roll over and go back to bed. The problem with that is you're getting fragmented sleep. So a sleep cycle, you start at an awake phase, you dip down to your REM and your deep sleep, and then you come back up to a near awake phase. You do that all night long. Hmm. If you are having arousals, you're starting to dip down and then you wake up. And, and arousal up. means not some sexual thing, but you're being no. woken up. Correct. Yeah. yeah. You're waking, you're looking at your alarm clock and you're going, oh, it's only 2.30 and you're rolling over and you're going back to bed. If we're doing this all night long, you're not getting the deep restorative right. sleep that you need. And we re recuperate in a very particular way. Um, so our blood, our muscle, our soft tissue recuperates first. And then it's our mental acuity, our metabolism, our immune system. That critical stuff tends to happen towards the end of your sleep cycles. And so we want to make sure you're getting the benefit of that. Wow. So troubleshoot it make sure your mattress isn't too hard and it's comfortable watch the stimulants food and drinks and, and then take is, some supplements try your supplements but if it is too hard you can put a cover on it you don't have to trash the whole thing if you've invested in it right you can put oh, yeah, a softer yeah. cover yeah you can go get you can get a topper there's a lot of different topper. things that you can do to um to troubleshoot that bed before you make a big investment right. in it or if you're not ready to make a big, big investment yeah a big one for me is i would always wake up uh, like four or something and have to go to the bathroom because I would I'm like hydrating I'm really yeah. good about hydrating all day yeah and my friend my colleague Dave here actually was like maybe you shouldn't drink anything after like 9 p.m. like yeah. no water so now I don't do I don't drink water you know I don't have the right. glass by the bed and right. I don't and I don't have to get up at all I just sleep the whole night and I'm yeah. like <laughs> and that's you perfect. Know? Like yeah. that is a great example of listening to your body and and recognizing the bio individuality yeah. of a person. It was so obvious when you said it, but I was like, oh, I'm so into hydrating. I just hadn't thought about it. You know. It, well, I, I think I told you the story at lunch when my health really tanked from sleep deprivation. In spite of the fact that I'm a health coach, in spite of the fact that I've helped a bajillion people get better sleep, I never thought it was from sleep deprivation. I thought it was all from stress. And my doctor was like, Nicole. You got me my bed. You're the one that gave, like helped me with my sleep issues. How did you miss this? 
So, you know, sleep is a big deal. You want to have a sleep routine. Mm -hmm. You want to think about the quality of your sleep, not just the quantity. And you definitely, if you have kids that aren't sleeping well, you know, we're looking at things that are staggering and frightening. Rises in childhood cancer, um, childhood obesity, childhood type 2 diabetes. Um, we have to pay attention to what we're feeding our kids and what they're resting on. Those yeah. are huge. Yeah. Yeah, we think we're so smart. And how much they're resting. We think we're so smart in the modern age, but we're like loading everything with, with stress, screens. Techno stress. Te Tablets. When I see kids yeah. laying in bed, like I'll, 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 I'll be scrolling through like my Facebook feed and I'll see a four-year-old laying in bed at night with her tablet like this and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it just, yeah, it pains me. Yeah. And then chemicals. Chemicals. Yeah. And uh, one of my pet things that I love to talk about or that I love to hate on is uh, vinyl and plastic shower curtains, which yes. all of us have. Oh New York Times listed them as one of the top six toxins in everyone's life. Correct. So I have hemp shower curtains. It's a pain in the butt. You have to dry them out over the heat vent, but it's not that hard. No, it's not that hard. And no. you look, we live in a day and age day um, where we have a different toxic soup. Yeah. So I have a lot of people say, well, that was certified safe. You're right. In an independent lab with a single chemical at a low dose, it was certified mm. safe. But when we pour it into the toxic soup of all the other chemicals in our house, mm. we layer it with forced heat. So now we're, we're putting heat into it. We don't know. We have windows that like have the R value that's crazy high, so there's no natural ventilation. Houses used to breathe. Correct. Now yeah. we have a like super tight envelope. Yeah, so we are living in toxic soup. And yeah. and, and I'm not and the carpets, you were talking about carpets before. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, like, look, some people think that I could that I'm I live a pretty um alternative dramatic alternative lifestyle, and I do. Um but my sources and my information are very credible. You know, my son's neurologist is a Harvard Medical School grad, and he right. was the first one to tip me off on this awareness and this journey. And so, you know, we don't live in our parents' generation. We definitely don't live in our grandparents' generation in terms of our exposure. And then you layer in the radiation of cell phone towers and Wi-Fi. And so not only are we... We're, not only are we in a toxic suit, but we're radiating it. Right. <laughs> like, so turn great. your Wi-Fi off at night. Make yeah. sure your mattress is great. Yeah. We got we got some homework. Well, we thank did. you, Nicole. For yeah, your time. it was a pleasure. And thank you guys. I, if you have comments and um, I need to answer them, or my Luft team yeah. does, we'll be standing by, and we hope to hear from you. Yeah, and we'll try to make sure people get. I know Instagram didn't get the uh, link. Probably there's no way to really do that. So we'll try to connect it. The Instagram yeah. is already run out. But Luft, get your free mattress. Uh, for yourself or your kid, uh, comment and we'll, uh, Vanessa will pick one uh, for each. Yeah. And then um, everyone gets the biggest discount ever. And yes. that info is also in the blog. Yeah. And that's thank you so today. much. Bye. It's been so interesting. Yeah. Thank you. I yeah. mean, I really appreciate it. Oh, I love it. Yeah. We could talk all day as, I've <laughs> as we've demonstrated. Probably longest video. No one's going to sleep tonight after watching this video. They're all going to Oh no, I'm going to sleep so hard. I'm going to have my routine. <laughs> no, I mean, it's going to be even better. All right. Thank you. Yeah, for sure.